Hey everyone, this is Yami, your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am teaming up with some amazing creators here on YouTube. Shannon from The Daily DIYer invited us to do a Christmas in July collaboration. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I love Christmas and I don't think it's ever too soon to start planning. So in today's collaboration, we have an amazing lineup. We have Shannon with The Daily DIYer, Courtney with Creative on the Cheap, myself, Whitney with Whiskey and Wit, Jennifer with a little bit of Common Crazy, and Kristen over at Kristen K. There is a playlist in my description box so you can check out everyone's videos there. All right, let's get started. Okay, so my first DIY, I am bringing my little obsession with embroidery hoops to the table. In this one, we're gonna make beautiful embroidery hoop ornaments. I purchased these at Hobby Lobby and I have seen a lot of people use fabric for embroidery hoop ornaments. However, I am gonna use ribbon and I found this beautiful ribbon at half off at Hobby Lobby as well. It has these beautiful grayish blue stripes down the ribbon that I thought would give a beautiful coastal farmhouse look. Now for these ornaments, you're gonna want to cut six strips of ribbon, making sure that they go across all the way over each end of the hoop. After you've cut them, you're gonna to want to do a basket weave pattern, just like this. Then you're gonna take your second embroidery hoop, the outer part, and you're gonna push it down over that ribbon. After you do that, you wanna make sure you pull any ribbon a little bit tighter that needs to be pulled, and then tighten your embroidery hoop at the top to secure. Then cut off all the excess ribbon. Finally, you simply add a little piece of ribbon at the top to hang it from your Christmas tree, and that is it. I love the simplicity of this ornament, but I also do love that the ribbon kind of makes it look like a little bit of a fabric tobacco basket, in my opinion. Plus, it has those beautiful coastal and cottagey farmhouse colors that I love so much. Next up, we're gonna be using this little Dollar Tree truck. I bought several of them at the end of last year, so I have a couple in my stash already. Now, I am loving this blue color for my Christmas decor this year, and so I decided to go ahead and use it on this truck as well. This is actually the same color that I use for my coffee table station. Now you're gonna to wanna to get the entire truck, make sure you get all of the edges, and I actually gave this two coats to make it nice and smooth. I came back with some Folk Art Black Chalk Paint for the tires. Now I didn't want a deep or bright green, so I decided to go with a very light sage green color for my Christmas tree. Then I came back with some white chalk paint for the center of the wheels. I wanted to add a little bit more dimension to the Christmas tree, so I added a little bit of snow to the tips of the tree using a white paint marker, and then I used it as well to add a couple of details on the truck. Next, I'm using this large canvas piece that you can find at your local Dollar Tree, and of course, my very favorite poplar sticks that I get from Home Depot. They're only a dollar and five cents and they're three feet in length. I wanted to frame out the canvas with those poplar sticks, so I went ahead and made my first cut at a 45 degree angle. After I did my first cut, I took it back to the canvas and marked the other end. The second one was easy because all I had to do was take the measurements of the first one. And then I did the same for the other two. Once I had my four pieces cut, I laid them face down on the table, and then I took my miter shears that I use for all my craft cutting and cut down some popsicle sticks in small pieces. 
Next, I took my Dollar Tree wood glue and I added it to the ends of all of the frame pieces. And then I took my hot glue and then on each of the corners, I added those popsicle sticks to hold those ends in place. Once everything was glued, I flipped it around and then I used my favorite walnut colored wood tint and I stained the entire frame, making sure I got all the edges both outside and inside. After that was dry, I flipped it over so that I could attach the canvas to the back and I just used a combination of Gorilla Glue and hot glue to hold it together. Now I had these little Merry Christmas letters for a while now. I believe I got them on super duper clearance a while ago at Hobby Lobby, but you can always use the letters from Dollar Tree for this. It was then time to assemble my little Christmas sign. So I took the truck and laid it where I wanted it to go and then started playing with the letters to make sure I had them in the right places before I glued them down. In order to attach the little truck, I used a combination of hot glue and then Gorilla Glue. I simply used hot glue for the Merry Christmas portion. And that was it for this DIY. So in case you're wondering why I didn't stain these letters like the frame, if you notice the sides of the letters are actually dark like the wood on the frame. So I thought it already kind of coordinated with it and I thought it would give it a nice contrast. All right, DIY number three is another set of ornaments. These ornaments I picked up on sale last year from Michaels. They were only a dollar a piece, if I remember correctly, and they are made of wood and super cute. I took some more of that same wood tint and I gave each of them one coat. Now, if you apply this wood tint with a brush, you will need a lint-free cloth to wipe off the excess. Here's what they look like stained. And the next thing I did was get some leftover fabric from a previous DIY. I had made some cushions for my living room last year and I had these little strips still in my scrap fabric jar. This is a great way to use some extra fabric that you might have lying around, or if you wish to coordinate your ornaments with some of your decor that you have already, it's a wonderful way to tie the two together. And since I'm going with more blues in my Christmas decor this year, I thought this was perfect and just exactly the width I needed. I wanted each ornament to have a different pattern from the fabric, so I just laid it down, traced it, and cut it with some fabric scissors. I laid it on top of the ornament to make sure I liked the way it looked, and then I proceeded to cut the fabric for the other two ornaments. And then I took some Mod Podge. The one I'm using is a matte finish, but you can use any finish that you like, or you can also use a fabric Mod Podge as well. I accidentally added Mod Podge to the top part of the ornament. If you do try this, definitely don't add Mod Podge to that portion of it. I added the fabric and smoothed it out with my fingers. Then I came in with my Mod Podge squeegee, which is the best thing ever because it makes everything super flat and worked my way from the inside out. I will have a link to all the products I use in my description box in case you want to check these out. Now the reason you don't want any Mod Podge on the top part of the ornament is because you want to cut off any excess that kind of covers that little piece of the ornament because you do want it to show. I let these dry for a little while and then I came back and added Mod Podge to the top of the fabric. 
You don't want to worry about any excess fabric at this point on the outer edges. You want to wait till all this is dry and then we'll get back to that. I let this dry overnight and came back the next day. With a cutting mat and a box cutter, I came back the following day and I cut off the edges. What the Mod Podge does is seals and hardens the fabric. So coming back at this point will make it a lot easier to get crisper edges when you use that box cutter, as you see here. And then after that, you are done with your ornaments. So much for watching let me know in the comments below which one of these was your favorite also hit like if you enjoyed this video thank you so much to shannon at the daily diyer for inviting me on this awesome christmas in july collaboration make sure to check out that playlist link in my description box to see what everyone else created don't forget to check out my second channel the latinos next door and i will see you guys in the next video until then adios <music>